Hello and welcome to this Need to Know programme looking at children's trusts. At a recent conference, 200 head teachers were asked how many knew what children's trusts were and how they worked. Just two hands went up. So now's your chance to know more than your head about this important change in education and children's services. Historically, I think lots of agencies have worked in very isolated little kind of enclosed kind of areas of specialisms and um, have been not reluctant but not real well versed in the kind of arrangements for how, to, how best to share the information that they have on children and families who are quite vulnerable with other people working with the same families in the same areas. Piloted initially by 35 local authorities, Children's Trusts have been rolled out across the country since 2007. They're designed to join together the thinking, practice, responsibility and accountability of all children's services operating at a local level. Above all, the aim is to put children at the centre, with all the services affecting them radiating outwards. The whole purpose of multi-agency working is to put the child and their family at the centre and to make sure that what their experience, what they interface with, is coordinated and joined up and puts their needs first. Services are much more aligned and they, they, there's a much more feeling of a common purpose so that they're not working in conflict with each other with the same families but actually um, they're much more kind of um, consistent in the approach and using schools much more effectively because what we tend to forget is that the schools are seeing these children and families every day and that they're, they're the kind of crux of all of these, they're the catalyst and the crux for all these kind of issues. And I think increasingly certainly in Southwark we have a range of um, children with a range of vulnerabilities but there are now consistent plans for those children whereby there's a single plan which lots of different agencies contribute to. I'm joined now in the Ministry's own studio by Peter Launer, who is Director of Local Transformation, which means he's responsible for children's trusts here at the Department for Children, Schools and Families. So, welcome Peter. A lot of teachers still don't really understand what a children's trust is, so can you enlighten them? Okay. Children's trusts are partnerships. They're partnerships in local areas and partnerships that bring together all the people who are concerned with uh, the welfare of children. So it includes the local authority who have been asked to lead the partnership, but it will also include the primary care trust responsible for health services, uh, plus uh, youth offending teams, the police authority, connection service responsible for advice and guidance, and the learning and skills council responsible for training. Is a children's trust also an entity in its own right? I mean, could you look it up in the yellow pages, for example? The, it, at the moment, it's not a legal entity. Uh, is the partnership coming together and the local authority takes the lead responsibility and indeed has a statutory responsibility for bringing all the partners together. Uh, we're bringing in new legislation to make it a bit clearer because a lot of people have said it's not clear enough and there will be uh, a formal board set up but it's still not a legal entity with its own budget. Now all children's trusts share the same principles, aims and desired outcomes but the way they can get there may reflect local conditions. We need to make sure we have a collective vision for a local area which includes um, common understanding of what we need to do, what we need to prioritise in a local area, as well as looking at how we can work together better through integrated, integrated processes. So let's see how one head sees her own and her school's role within her local Southwark we Trust. To start, we've got N as our first um, child we need to talk about. And last time we were waiting to hear about Circle of Friends and Diane, that's something Of course there are national so um, are guidelines and the national curriculum and lots of statutory um, frameworks within which we have to work. But there's also a huge degree of flexibility with the way that you know, funds are delegated to schools. That actually schools have a great deal of autonomy to function in the way that they see um, is appropriate for their community. With your knowledge of the child before he'd even joined our school, that you were able to kind of oil that pathway between um, home and, and yeah. school, really. And I think in that case, it was just a parent, a mum, who was very anxious about the transfer to the junior school and what that might entail. And, and just having that chance to meet with you and with the person who was going to be her class teacher mm. for her son just made it all much more kind of um, homely for her, I think. Mm. It, it, it reassured her to an extent mm. where actually he's now beginning to flourish and thrive here. So, Peter, yeah. is every children's trust and its relationship with schools, as we saw there, is it always the same? They're not uh, all the same. In fact, there's a lot of variation around the country. 
And one of the things we're doing is, at the moment is trying to learn from what's working particularly well. And let's try and standardise that a little bit across the country. Still lots of local flexibility, but making sure the basic underpinnings are in place everywhere. Now, let's look at how priorities are decided locally. Early intervention and preventative provision is a key element of any children's trust and we endeavour locally to make sure that specialists can come into universal settings where children and families are, where the relationships are, to support and improve um, aspects such as learning um, and attainment. Under the Children's Trust, professionals working with children are required to promote joint working, to overcome barriers to sharing information, to listen to the voices of youngsters, their parents and carers about the services they're offered, and to ensure effective commissioning, planning and delivery of services to children and teenagers. So Peter, four aims there of Children's Trust. Um, how well are we doing so far? Are we doing well in all of those categories? Lots of good things happening around the country, but one of the lessons uh, so far is that we want to get schools much more engaged in Children's Trusts because it's schools that see most children most of the time. So they've got the best understanding of what the additional needs are. Um, and so in the new legislation we're saying that schools uh, should be involved in every children's trust. Now let's have a look at a multi-agency meeting at a Southwark school. These professionals, educational psychologists, children's services staff and teachers are discussing what's needed to help local children effectively. Okay, so M is the next child and um, I think there's been quite a lot of um, action on that case since the last time we met and I think has Nicola fed back to you about all of that? Yes, Nicola had a good conversation with Roz. She's been doing some assessments with them and um, is very worried about her mental state which is good because it's very reassuring for us because that's where we're particularly worried. Um, but they're also concerned, they're concerned that the child protection issue might have been closed a bit early. Um, so they want to do a lot more work getting to know her to see whether she might possibly disclose some new information. I think that's their thoughts at the moment. So, yeah, going really well. That's ongoing. What I'm really pleased about is that although the, the support from some house is somebody external coming in for, you know, from, from the behaviour unit, they've worked very hard to make that joined up so that yeah. it's not just that M's OK when that external person's there, but it's about the relationships with all the adults really who work yeah. in the year group. And also, I guess it's quite a complex case. I know, Kathleen, you've done the CAF. Mm -hmm. It's about, I think for me, it's just ensuring that, that everyone's part of that single plan now and that, yeah. and that the, the onus may fall on you to kind of coordinate, kind of team around the child meetings initially, certainly, yeah. to ensure that it's all joined up now that there's lots of different people involved. Yeah. Information sharing around children and young people is key to early intervention and preventative provision, but also to securing better multi-agency working to, to support the different needs of children and young people, which often need a number of different practitioners to be involved. It should work, but it's not working at the moment. Um, mind you, it is new, we've got to give it time, but you know, I've had a child where there was a problem in the summer. We were not passed on that information and the parents um, got a bit cross because we were doing one thing, social services were doing something else. And that was lack of communication. Policymakers at all levels, at central government and local government level, have to keep on, you know, high on their agenda about who are the actual practitioners delivering this stuff and are they really aware and understanding the, the theory and the concepts behind the decisions which are made, which I believe are, you know, are very, very sound ones. He's a child that I supported in his previous school where things gradually deteriorated to the extent that he was in danger of permanent exclusion. Um, but um, we managed to help facilitate a, a broadly a managed move, I suppose, Liz is how we broadly call it. You wouldn't believe he was a new child. He's just fitted in so well. Among so, so I well. Said, I had an email from, um, which is kind of mirroring yeah. what you've just said, really. But oh, she's, yeah. she's, she's delighted. She thinks she's got a different child to the one that she had before. Oh, yeah. Now, in general terms, you've been consulting on how things have been going uh, since 2000, or beginning of 2008. How has the consultation process gone? A uh, lot of interest in the, in the consultation. I don't think there's enough understanding about children's trusts in schools. 
Uh, and over the next couple of years and coming out of the consultation, that's one of the things we really want to happen, much better understanding engagement. We really want schools to say what they want the Children's Trust to do. A key part of the 2004 Children's Plan is the strengthening of Children's Trusts. They'll be expected to deliver measurable improvements for all children and young people, and by 2010 to have in place consistent high quality arrangements to identify those young people who require additional help. So Peter, are we on track then to, to meet that by 2010? Well, in some parts of the country we are, in other parts no. So what we want is for every children's trust to look at their arrangements and say, can we now meet this target? And if not, what more do we need to do to meet it? Now, Children's Trust will be commissioners of services, won't they? So how does that change things as they are now? And how much help will there be in guidance uh, centrally for Children's Trust in, in how they should commission services? We've, uh, we've published new guidance for Children's Trusts, um, which reflects uh, the consultation that's gone on over the last few months. Uh, there will be new guidance again on uh, the kinds of things to look at in a children and young people's plan. Uh, and there are also two really important organisations. One is about uh, to improve commissioning practice, um, which will be available to Children's Trusts. And also there's a new organisation called Centre for Excellence and Outcomes, who again is doing some really good work, learning from good practice around the country and spreading that to other Children's Trusts. One thing that teachers should know about Children's Trust, I think I would argue that they need to know a number of things about Children's Trust, but probably the most prevalent um, impact of a Children's Trust for a teacher will be the changes around the types of services they can access in and around the schools, such as the children's centres, extended schools and the multi-agency teams. I think one, of the, one tip for teachers really would be to um, have a link within the school who is well versed in the use of the common assessment framework and to use the common assessment framework effectively. The one thing I'd say that I'd suggest teachers take on board is first of all find out uh, what your children's trust, trust is doing, find out what their priorities are and I'm going to have a second. Secondly, make clear for your school what are the additional services that will make a difference to your children that you're not getting at the moment. Thank you. And my thanks to Peter Launer and to everybody else who's helped to explain how Children's Trusts will work. Goodbye.